Would you like to save thousands by not having to upgrade to a bigger truck? We will tell you how. Stay tuned. We know this video has the potential to be a controversial subject. In fact, you're probably furiously typing right now. We want to hear from you, but we ask that you please watch to the end before weighing in. And thank you. Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul. And I'm Liz. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you will certainly live amazing if you find out that you can pull your trailer with a three-quarter ton and you don't have to upgrade to a one ton. That was the good news that we found. So when we upgraded to a bigger fifth wheel, we pretty much expected to buy a one ton. And then you started doing research because we already had a three quarter ton. Instead of spending 30,000 to get a one ton, we spent less than 300 to yeah. do this. So anyone who has a truck, whether it's a half ton, three quarter or one ton could benefit. Oh, from you'll tenors. benefit from these. Yeah. And it's such a small investment too. I mean, it's just, I mean, for, even if you had somebody install them for you, you were, you're going to spend not much more than 300 bucks. Well, I wanted to find out what the difference was between the three quarter and the one ton. And I did some research. If you get the Duramax in the three quarter ton and the Duramax in the one ton, you're getting the same powertrain. Okay. So I'm getting the same engine, same engine, same transmission, same transmission. Okay. So what about radiator? The radiator has got to be bigger, right? Nope. Same, same radiator between the three quarter ton and a one ton. You've got the same radiator axles. That's a big thing. You're putting more weight on. If you have a fifth wheel or if you're pulling a travel trailer, you've got to have bigger axles in the back, right? You can get a three quarter ton with a lighter duty rear axle but you can also get a three quarter ton with the same axle that the one ton uses. And that's what we have. Okay. Then I got you brakes. You're definitely going to get bigger brakes with the one ton, right? Nope. The same brakes. Same brakes. Oh my gosh. So if you're sitting at home with a three quarter ton and you're thinking of upgrading to a one ton and you have the same axle that you have in a one ton and a three quarter ton, then why would you even upgrade to well, a one ton? There, there is, a heavier spring that is used on the one ton that's not available on the three quarter ton. And it's substantially heavier. Um, uh, we have the, the biggest spring available on the three quarter ton and it's a five leaf pack. If we had a one ton, the heaviest spring available on that is a nine leaf pack. Okay. So it can carry more weight. And that's basically the difference is that, that rear leaf spring. And that's it. There's that no other it. difference. You know, providing that your three quarter ton has the option for the heavier rear axle. Since we met our tow ratings and we do meet our tow ratings, but we're just inside them, it really comes down to, well, what can we do to beef up our truck? And one of the options is airbags. And we decided not to do airbags. And why is that? Well, I had airbags on my first truck and I noticed immediately when I put them on, that when you're unloaded, you still have to run air in the bag. I think the minimum is five pounds. Even with five pounds, you get some effect on the unloaded ride quality. That's so, what I've heard. The ride quality, when you do that, is, is it's stiffen, stiffer. It stiffens it up, yes. And we're not telling you not to buy a one ton, but if you have a three quarter ton, you may not need to buy a one ton. If you're right at, not over, but right at the maximum payload capacity of your truck, that is our situation. What we did is we added Timberin springs. Instead of spending 30,000 to get a one ton, we spent less than 300 to yeah. do this. $225 for a set of these. This is called a Timberin spring yeah. and it goes, it and replaces the bump stop. You have it right? upside down. I have it upside down. <laughs> But it replaces the bump stop and it adds, it allows the, the uh, truck to carry more load, right? Yeah. So this is not engaged when you're unloaded. This Correct. only works when you're loaded. So that's the big advantage over this versus airbag. Has no effect on unloaded ride quality. So when you engage it, you're adding how many pounds of capacity? This is... Well, this, this particular one is rated at 8,600 pounds. Mm -hmm. So more than the truck's rating. You know my F-250 mm -hmm. that I had to give up. Mm -hmm. I added the Timberins to that and I could not believe the difference it made. I was pulling a, a 27 foot bumper pull with that truck. In crosswinds, I was still 
it would still get squirrely. And you had a weight distribution system. I had a, a 10,000 pound equalizer hitch on it. Yeah, all of but that. But you still had a hard time keeping it stable in, in, in crosswinds. In crosswind. uh, there was a time going across New Mexico um, and there were some pretty high winds. I thought I was going to have to pull over. It got that bad. And, so it and, was... And I just white knuckled it through it. But but it was it was scary. Fast forward to to about a month later when I installed the timberins on that, I took a trip from El Centro to Santa Barbara along the Highway 8 in California. And there were some high wind passes through there. And the morning that I, that I did that drive, the winds were blowing and I hardly noticed it at all. You know, and I could not believe the difference between before and after the timberins. You're increasing roll stability, you decrease the sag you don't get as much squat when you put the weight on the back end. And it also adds some roll stability because you're putting a new contact point right over the axle, which keeps the axle more in place. And keep in mind that this really does not replace your leaf springs. These are made to work in concert with your existing suspension. I'm really thinking that everybody should have those. Yeah, even if you have a one ton, you should look into putting these on. Now the one ton, there is a higher capacity timberin for the one ton. They're a little bit more expensive. They're about $100 more, so 325 instead of 225. A good friend of mine, Jerry, hi Jerry, put these on his one ton that he just picked up. He pulls a big, over 30 foot long bumper pull. He said it, it helps tremendously. In fact, if you can change a tire, that's about as much level of expertise you need to install the Timberins, right? Yeah, it's pretty simple. I've done it to two different manufacturers, trucks, um, a Ford and a Chevy. The Ford was a little easier only because I just needed a, um, a ratchet and a, and a socket. With the Chevy, you need a jack and a couple of blocks of wood and some soapy water. So in researching this subject on forums, there are people out there that are, that are, uh, commonly known as the tow police and, uh, <laughs> and they have very strong opinions about you know what you should be towing with what truck if you listen to them they will convince you that you're going to kill every living being on the road if you, <laughs> if, you if you tow a, a trailer that's that's close to the limit we're not recommending you go over the limit but if you're close to the limit the tow police will come right in and go oh you need to get a bigger truck yeah and yeah. and the truth is if you're close to the limit but you're within the guidelines, you can tow safer with more stability with the Timberins. Absolutely. And one of the things that they will commonly bring up is that braking, braking distance. Well, the brakes between our three quarter ton and a one ton are identical. Now, is this the truth on uh, F250 to 350? Are the brakes I'm, the same? Yes, yes, they are the same. Yes. And a Dodge Ram uh, is what, a, a 2500 to 3500? Mm -hmm. Brakes are the same? Same brakes. They did not option the Ford F250 with the axle that comes in their 350. So you can't get it. Um, you know, we, we could have gotten a three quarter ton with a 10 and a half inch axle instead of the 11 and a half inch axle. And in which case the truck would be rated for much less weight than, than what it is rated for. But even if you have that lesser axle, the temperance will help you tow with more stability. Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. they, they will add stability to whatever you put them on. We made this video because we've used Timberins on two different vehicles and are very pleased with the results. We are sharing our experience with you, but expect you to make an informed decision. We can't speak to what your vehicle has or doesn't have. We are not being paid by Timberin. We reached out to them about this video and they sent us another set so we could show the box and installation. We put special links to Timberin Springs in the description. These prices are lower than on Timberin's website. By using these links, you help support our channel as we make a small cut, but you don't pay any extra. We are not suggesting you exceed your vehicle payload or tow rating. If you have saggy springs, you need to replace them before installing timberins. Do your own research regarding your vehicle's payload and tow rating. As always, safety first. So let us know in the comments what you think about the Timberns after you install them. And join the A-Team. Just push on the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.